let's look at your main stories. Ten past eight. Well, there's been widespread condemnations we've been reporting this morning of an American dentist who shot and killed a lion in Zimbabwe. It's made most of the front pages of the newspapers here today. Yes, it appears that Walter Palmer paid £35,000 to go on the hunt. The animal, known as Cecil, was shot with a bow and arrow. Other details emerging as well include claims that the lion took 40 hours to die. Well, with us this morning, Dominic Dyer from the Born Free foundation good morning to you good morning. Dominic. it'll come as a surprise to a lot of people that actually you're allowed to to, to to shoot anything like that legally in africa well yes there's many people that do travel to africa and many african countries zimbabwe botswana south africa all of whom allow permits to to hunt animals endangered animals elephants rhinos lions jaguars and that might shock people but there's lots of money being generated by that business and money that presumably the countries feel that they need they, some would justify that to say that it would help. Uh, there's little real good evidence to say that hunting animals in this way actually helps to protect the environment or local communities. On average across South Africa, maybe the whole hunting industry brings in about $200 million. If you look at an economy like Kenya, the wildlife tourism industry alone brings over a billion dollars. So it's far more money to be brought in in a much more positive way from tourism than killing animals. And in this particular circumstance, it was absolutely the wrong lion to take yes there's nothing right about this situation it was a national park so he shouldn't have been able to go in there at night and kill any animal without a permit they actually lured the animal out by baiting a vehicle they shot it with a bow didn't kill it and as you said 40 hours to track it down and shoot it and it was a tracked radio collared animal as part of a research project from the university of oxford so that was also something that would have given it protection so the whole thing is very very bad in that sense and that's why the zimbabwe authorities are taking action yes and so this line is lost um i understand as well that he had cubs and that may have an impact on them too yes there's two dominant uh, males in in this particular area so the other dominant male that survives will probably kill the cubs of cecil that's just going to happen and that's a tragedy in itself as well mm. the uh, american dentist who, who shot him did it with a bow and arrow is a lot of that sort of thing going on it doesn't seem particularly humane way of it's a common them. hunting practice um, hunters in north america particularly use bows they say you can get very close to the animals they will hunt polar bears like this so not just lions um, and it's something that's becoming more common in africa we're also seeing new canned hunting operations established in south africa for example canned hunting yeah this right. is where you farm lions uh, and there's about 150 operations in south africa now over 5,000 lions being bred in very intensive cruel circumstances which brings the cost down it becomes cheaper and then more people can come in and do it. So we're very worried about that business as well. OK, so what, from your point of view, um, would be the best ways of trying to stop what seems to be an industry in some ways? You firstly have to recognise that lions are under real pressure. We recognise now that, obviously, elephants and rhinos are in real trouble. We lost about 35,000 elephants in Africa last year, about one every 15 minutes. But if you look at lions, we had about 80,000 lions in 1980. We have less than 25,000 today. They're only in 23% of the territory of the East to inhabit. We cannot go on this way. There's no justification for trophy hunting of lions. We need to see steps in America, steps in Europe, to stop the import licences that are given to these hunters to bring these trophies back. We are beginning to see that happen, and I think this case of Cecil will help in that yes, sense. Not just lions, of course. This particular dentist has put photos up of himself on, on, on the web with a dead leopard that he shot. Yes, and he's not alone. You know, it's an American dentist, and some people say, oh, it's American hunters, they do this. But there's well-established British figures that do it. Sir David Scully, former governor of the BBC, has been highly criticised for killing lions and other animals in Africa. So, you know, this happens. People do go and spend their money in this way. We've got to bring in regulations and controls to stop it. Um, and you, uh, quite clearly, so this was an illegal hunt that, that, that this particular car lion was killed in. What about sort of, you know, pressure on, the, on those legal hunts? I mean, can there be pressure brought to, to change that as well? You, you can bring in tighter measures to ensure, for example, that you can't go into a national park like this and break the rules. But Zimbabwe is a very difficult country. It's pretty much a broken country in terms of how it operates politically and economically. Corruption is rife. The Zimbabwe government is currently selling off elephants to China at $25,000 a piece and shipping them out by air freight to put into, into safari-type parks in China. So they're basically cashing in on their wildlife, the Zimbabwe government. So many people don't have confidence in them being able to control what goes on in their national parks. OK. Thanks very much Thank for coming to talk to us this morning. You're welcome. It's a quarter past eight. This is breakfast. These are the main stories this morning. Another 1,500 migrants tried to enter the Channel Tunnel, tunnel last night as uh, ministers prepared to hold an emergency meeting to discuss the crisis in Calais. One person lost their life. An American dentist who sparked global outrage by killing Zimbabwe's most famous lion says he deeply regrets shooting the animal known as Cecil. 
Carol's uh, got the weather and some feathered friends, rather mm -hmm. large looking too. <laughs> they are too. Good morning. Yes, I want you to draw your attention though to the sky here. Today across Northern England, Northern Ireland and Southern Scotland, it's going to be drier and it won't feel as cold as it has done in the last few days. The forecast for the whole of the UK today is one of bright spells, sunny spells and showers and not all of us by any stretch will catch a shower but we still do have a cool breeze coming down from the north particularly across the North Sea areas 